Good afternoon. Welcome to the Park Board meeting. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may or may audio, make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by, the, by those present and are deemed unacknowledged and permissible. We got a roll call of officers, please. Bob Tavares. Mr. Tavares. Joe Schoenberg. Jeffrey Schoenberg. Marjorie Ingram. I get an acceptance of the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, make a motion to accept the meeting. February 6th. Second. February 6th. Second. Joe, can you state that they were from February 6th? Please? From February 6th. Uh, I apologize. 2019. 2019. I'll make a motion. Will we accept? The minutes from February 6, 2019. All in favor? Second. Aye. Citizen import. We have Joshua Hetzler. I don't know if I said that right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. I just want to speak briefly on uh, the chess table incident. Um, I love chess. I love free things for the city. and. Uh, I kind of been privy to what was going on with the chess tables. Uh, I don't want to see us turn away someone in the city who's offering to put something in our parks for free. It doesn't cost us anything. I think it's a benefit as a child. I played right over here on Sullivan Drive. We used to bring our chess pieces down and we'd play chess. So I, I think it's uh, something that would be great to have in the parks. I was just concerned about how that uh, the, the, the communication between this board and that gentleman who wanted to put them in. Um, it seemed like a lot of the tension and stress came from the improper placement and uh, I, I was wondering, well, what's the procedure for that? When someone wants to donate something to the parks, do we go out, do we mark it? Is, is there a parks board employee that goes out, spray paints the ground, or do we offer them a satellite photo with, you know, hey, there's a tree here, there's a rock here, we want you to put it right here in the middle. So I think that there might be a way to uh, alleviate some of the stress and some of the problems that occurred with this. So in the future, if someone donates something, to the parks and uh, we accept it, I think it'll be great. The other concern I had was, I, I think we, we spoke about how we were concerned he was making money off them. I, I think that every item we put in a park, someone made money on it, whether it's grass seed or the new playground that the Patriots put in. So, I, you know, if it's free and they're gonna give it to us, as long as it was paid for by someone, you know, gainfully employed, I don't have an issue with that. Um, and so I guess my suggestion would be if someone isn't going out and, and marking those locations or meeting that gentleman when installation is gonna take, pro you know, is going to happen on any project. Uh, I'm sure when Patriots wanted to come down and put that in, I'm sorry. No, no. no. All right, yeah. So I'm sure when the, when the Patriots people wanted to come put the part, we were like, okay, we, this is where we want it, and we, you know, we met and we put it. This guy with a chess table, maybe it was easier to say, oh yeah, put it over here, and it became a he said, she said. So to avoid that, I was just thinking it would be nice to have maybe a pocket employee goes out with him. This is it. Mocks it out with paint or stakes or a satellite photo, and that's my only concern because I don't want to see the city turn down free stuff that would you know, benefit the city. That's all. Thank you. Josh? Have a few people. Mrs. Smith went to the park mm -hmm. with him and told him where and personally to stood in the spot. I understand that. I, I watched the meeting. I understand. And, 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 and it was, it was I, I'm, I'm not going to elaborate on it, but the exchange that took place after the fact, it was almost like we had to defend our actions rather than the individual saying, I did I completely disregarded what you said. So it was, it, it, we don't want to go there. It was definitely something where this board was entertaining those things on a regular basis, but it became quite disrespectful. And he can put these chess tables anywhere else in the city. He can put them at fire barns. He can put them wherever he, but as far as the park department is concerned, that was, um, it was not a good, situation and it became quite disrespectful. So with that being said, um, I think we're best to just leave it at that. Right. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, thank you for, for coming down. I mean, we certainly appreciate that in your uh, the conversation, but I feel, quite honestly, that um, we were disrespected. I feel like we were circumvented in some areas. And um, unfortunately, as you stated, um, where things are in the parks that are purchased, the, this individual was actually going out selling things and then giving the okay, saying that they were going somewhere. 
it, it just didn't it didn't work out. Although we appreciate it, it right. it's just it's just not going to uh, work out. The board had made a decision, and I'm pretty sure we're going to stick by that. But you know, if there's other areas that he wants to look into, or you want to, because you love chess, you know, you could right. more than happy to put one in maybe in the fire station or the parking lot or wherever right. you want. You know, absolutely. But it's just we've made a decision, and no, can I speak? I was just, no, no, I was just worried, you know, the, the process in the future. I mean, forget chess tables; it could be something else in the future. Someone's want to, hey, we want to put this at the park, and. I don't want the same thing to happen when someone wants to give us something for free where we, we end up having to turn that person away and then we kind of we, we ruin a relationship with it where we could be getting more forever, not less. So maybe, like, like I was saying, a park employee meets this person at the time of installation and, and you were there the day of and, 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 and I don't know and, and it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, just, I just wanted to make sure there was no, something in place to avoid this in, in the future. We have yeah, something definitely. in place. Nancy's very okay. capable of doing it. Uh, we feel very comfortable as a board. Matter that, fact, this was the first time it ever... Okay. Yeah. So, so we we you know we tried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a good night, everyone. You too. Thank you. Street tree planning committee. Anybody here? No. They have a lot of jobs. I don't know if they use. So. They have a lot of jobs. They use. Yeah. Tree planning uh, committee. Nobody's here. No. no. New business. A letter of resignation from the position of chairman of the board. We don't have to, we don't have to read it. You don't have to, you don't have to read it, but you just have to vote to accept. Uh, I got it. I got it. Jeff can read it if he wants to. Just business. Um. Basically, I sent a letter to the board members, an email. I can say. Uh, and to Nancy, informing them that as of today, I'll be resigning as chairman of the, uh, this board. I will stay on as a member, and I'm resigning for personal reasons. And that's basically it. I just motion to accept, place on file. Motion to accept, place on file. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Brings us to the election of Park Board Officer. Can we get nominations for the chair of chairman, please? Nominate Joe Schoenberg. Second. No. I decline. I'll nominate Boston. Second. Nomination. Right, can we get a motion? All in favor? Aye. Can I get a second? All in favor? Aye. Congratulations. Congratulations, Marcy. The new chairman of the board. Thank you. Okay, with that said, um, having said that, position, I don't think she can do both. Yeah, we'll have to do it. We'll post it. Yeah, no, it's in all the board offices. It's so, oh, we can do the secretary. We have to do them all now. I make a motion to <coughs> have Phil for vice chair. Second. Thank you. I accept. Yeah. Motion to accept, Jeff. Second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. Motion for, is there a. Um, Motion for secretary. Nominate Victor Ferris. Nomination for Victor Ferris. I'll accept. Okay. Second. I'll second. Okay. Motion to accept it. Accept. I'll make a motion to make it to accept. Okay. So in favor? Aye. We had a second. Okay, so proposal of the cemetery burial expansion. 
Good evening, everyone. We'll start in the uh, either blue or green folder. Yeah. What folder are we doing? The uh, green folder first. Okay. Or blue. Green or blue. Green or blue. <laughs> we'll go to the yellow one second. So uh, in this folder, it's a proposal for burial lot expansions. On the first page, you'll see a copy of our current estimated plot inventory. Um, broken down into the types of plots we have. So single graves, we have a roughly 130 single graves left. Um, for two grave lots, we have three. Four grave lots, also three. And cremation lots, we have about 16. Um, so we do need to start thinking about some expansion options. And um, I think both proposals here tonight are um, low resistance um, as far as um, the amount of work needed to be done in order to offer them um, for sale to those wishing to be interred at Oak Grove Cemetery. On the next page um, are the two options. So option one, we're adding to the existing lot um, called D lot. There are currently 12 rows there um, and we would add at the end, there is a picture um, two pages in um, showing D lot um, looking south um, from Palm Avenue um, and we would add the new double grave lots at the forefront of that photo to the left and right of the tree um, and to orient yourself there is a map provided in there as well um, any questions there so it's number one on the left side of the map if you're looking at the map highlighted in orange Chris, this was the one that was in the corner, right? I did go out to view. No, it. this is the one in the more in the middle of the cemetery, the first one. This, the first one. Yep. Okay. Oh, I see what you're at. Okay. Mm -hmm. so these are ready to go. Yeah, this would this would be a very easy one. Um, there's already an established lot there. Um, there's a much larger buffer from the end of that last grave there to the road. Um, than most typical lots have. So we have the ability to add an additional two grave lot um, there, again, oriented in the same way that the lots are already oriented. Um, all of these graves are two grave lots, uh, two grave plots already. Um, so it would add an, ad an additional lot at the end of the row, giving us 12 more double lots um, to add to the three that we currently have. Um, no work would need to be done. Um, except at the point of burial, we might have to um, move the tree or remove the tree entirely. But um, at this point, we're not sure what the root system looks like until we dig there. If I may, Chris, that would give us a total of 28? Um, it would be 12 double lots. So it's, it's a more of like a family plot. An individu individual purchases it for them and someone else. So. Um, it would be for two full body traditional interments, um, but 12 lots would be sold. Um, option two is a little more extensive. Um, it's in the rock maple and pyrus area of the cemetery. That's marked on the map number two in the right hand corner of the map there. <clears throat> There's also an aerial view. In your packets, and I have it here as well, so people here can see it a little better. So this is in that corner that we looked at uh, yesterday. Um, we would clear a minimal brush in the first box labeled uh, 31 feet by 76 feet. Um, test digs have been completed there, so there's no ledge or significant um, boulders that we'd have problems with. Um, and the water table seems deep enough where we wouldn't have any issues. 
um, interring bodies there either. That would grant us an additional 30 double grave lots. Um, so it would significantly add to our inventory. That's not nowhere near where they're doing that. Uh... No, this is on the opposite side. So this is the, the southern side of the cemetery, um, closer to where Locust Street is, but there's still quite a bit of distance from where this is to that area. Savigny Street backs uh, dead ends to the cemetery at that location. Um, it doesn't flood out when it rains, does it? That's no. Side. No, that's the other side. Yeah. Victor, you can see it on yeah, this like commission. Yes. This map here is. is yeah, there's a second map. It. There's a map in there, an aerial view. Yeah. See. At the back of the packet. That second box there, 80 feet by 54 feet, um, would be a little more extensive as far as clearing some trees and um, doing some minimal grade work, but that could all be taken care of in house um, by the cemetery staff. That adds 112 single burial sites that we would um, create combination of double and four grave lots um, as needed. I think we can, I'm confident that we can lay out that section in a way that it'll be predominantly two graves, but if families come in and would like to purchase four, that we can position them in a way where they would have four graves um, together to offer to their family. Um, so that would um, allow again 112 additional burial sites so if the board approves both of these options tonight that'll give us 196 grave sites to work with um, which is uh, pretty much taking what we have currently and doubling it so uh, we would add on average we do about 67 traditional um, uh, burials a year so uh, 67 so this would give us about three years um, if those numbers held true and um, are we totally full now no we're not totally full we have space um, I I'm working with John and um, other members of the team there are other options as well to expand um, in the future they're going to be a little more ex uh, a lot more of a um, process of work clearing um, some land some trees um, as well as once they wrap up the CSO project that's happening in the north northern corner of the cemetery, um, there should be some space there for us as well. Um, but this will allow us to um, have a more immediate impact as far as what we can offer to people when they um, come to purchase a lot at Oak Grove, as well as give us the time we need to um, put together a proper plan for those other areas. So all these areas are ready to go and no work has to be done other than maybe moving that tree. That so in, in the first option for D-Lot, those are ready to go. We can start selling those as soon as tomorrow if approved. Option two, we would have to do some work. There, there, there are trees there. You can see in the photo um, and the aerial view there, there are trees in that area that would have to be cleared. Um, I don't have an estimate of how much time that would take, but we would be able to start um, take doing that work in-house with the tree division as well as the cemetery staff to clear that area. This is double lot. Do you sell that to one person or that's going to be two people? We sell it to one family, if you will, and they bury. Uh, a lot of times it's husband and wife or, or partners that purchase the lot and they're both interred there. Chris, on a cremation, I mean... If I want a lot, how many got it? How many cremations are going in? So if you if you specifically purchase a cremation lot, you can inter four cremains in those lots. Uh, we do allow people to inter cremations in traditional <coughs> body burial lots as well. Um, typically, they do that after they've already interred a traditional burial. They can um, up to four per traditional burial on top of that traditional burial. We can do. Make a motion to approve this plan for the expansion. So a motion for the proposal of the cemetery burial expansion for right now. Yes. Okay. I second. Thank you. Thank you. Can we do both option A and B? Uh, option one and two. Both options. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now you'll present. You'll do the other uh, presentation that you have. Yes. Is that with that?
Okay. I'm going to vote for the first one and then the second one. It's two different things. That's what it says here. We don't. We can't vote until we haven't seen it yet. So if you want to. If you're ready. I, We're ready. You, okay. You ready? So, Everyone ready? The second um, presentation is in the yellow packet. Um, it's a proposal for columbariums, which are for um, cremations, um, for an above ground interment option. Um, in the first tab, again, it's the same plot inventory. Um, and then in tab two is one of the proposals. So one company has proposed to um, furnish and install um, three cremation uh, columbarium units. The units would be um, entirely composed of granite um, and they'd have 32 niches that would be companion niches. So again, uh, a family would purchase the niche and be able to inter two urns of ashes in that one unit um, and measure 12 by 12 by 12 which would accommodate the standard um, urn size. I have samples of the granite that's proposed as well. Um, this pr the proposals you have are for a maple finish which I think matches um, both our office as well as the gate entryway at Oak Grove Cemetery and then there's also a a uh, slightly less expensive option in the gray. Um, so the unit would be made in, in this material, um, both the exterior that you would see when you showed up to the cemetery, as well as the interior of the unit where the, the um, urns would be placed. There'd be a interior privacy door, again, of the same color granite, and then an exterior door in a black finish. Um, this door would cover that single niche and be engraved by the family with the names and anniversary dates of, of those interred there. Um, yeah, it would be completely polished. The base of it would be six inches thick um, in a rock pitch finish, um, which is what you see with most um, headstones and monuments. It's a rock pitch finish, so that way um, if anything hits them, it doesn't really damage it. You can't tell if it's been if it's been nicked. That's why they finish it in the in the rock pitch, the rock pitch, so it's not a smooth finish at the base where it comes in contact with the ground. Um, you can see some photos of similar units in your packets. Um, <clears throat> again, they're they're 32 niches, so they're they're four high, eight eight across. <clears throat> And the proposal would be to purchase three. Um, the first company in the book, the pricing is in there, and then I've also handed out, or John has handed out to you, um, two other um, pricing options. So Watertown Engineering, the one in your packet um, that you received in the mail before the meeting, um, proposes to build and then come to the cemetery and install. They're a local company located in Whitman, Massachusetts. Um, the second company is Eikhoff. They are in Minnesota. There's not a lot of companies that do this, um, first of all, so we had to look other places. Second company is Eikhoff. They're located in Minnesota. They would also build these units, ship them to Oak Grove Cemetery, and have staff on site to install. And then the third company, they're really just a monument dealer. They'll purchase these for us from China and just have them shipped to the cemetery. Um, and not provide any type of assistance with its installation or training on how to um, both open and close the um, niche units. Is that the Salem Stone one? That's correct, Salem Stone, sorry. That's okay. And then the. Okay. So then it seems like Watertown Engineering is the. It's local. It's in right. They're in Massachusetts. If they had a problem, it'd be easier to. Exactly. And we work with them um, already to purchase um, our cement liners that caskets are placed in uh, before they're interred. So 
Um, we're familiar with them. Um, we've called around to other cemeteries and you'll see some research in there done by Brenda from our uh, office as far as pricing from other cemeteries and um, a lot of them have spoken very highly of Watertown and the, the product they've provided and the service they've provided. Um, I've also included on, in tab three the burial statistics. Um, the first, <clears throat> it goes back from 2016, 2017, and 2018. Um, the first column there is uh, notes traditional burials. The second column in notes uh, transitional assistance, tra traditional burials, and those are ones in which the city and state work to assist families who don't have money to bury their loved ones. Um, and then a total of traditional burials. So in 2016, it was 70 traditional burials, uh, 67 in 2017, and 65 in 2018. And then moving further to the right, we have uh, cremain burials as well as um, pre-need purchases. So we have sold cremation lots on a pre-need basis. Um, traditional burial lots, we do not sell pre-need. Um, it has to be for an immediate need. So a total of cremain sales, um, 2016 we did 36, in 2017 we did 51, and in 2018 we did 35, and then I broke down the percentages for each of those years as well. Um, Massachusetts and actually most of the country are, are seeing a 50-50 rate of um, cremation versus traditional um, burials. Um, it doesn't necessarily translate to burials in a in a cemetery because with cremains uh, loved ones can hold on to the remains of those who have passed either at home or um, spread their ashes in some other location so this would allow Oak Grove Cemetery to provide another option to families in Fall River um, and in tab uh, so actually in Fall River there's only one option for columbarium uh, burial and that's at Notre Dame and you'll see their pricing um, under tab 5 but I guess before we get there, tab four has our current pricing list. Um, just for your reference, um, main thing you want to focus on is the cremation lot. So we do sell cremation lots for $500. Again, you can enter four individuals um, in those lots. There is a deed fee paid to the cemetery to pay for the deeds prepared by the city clerk's office. And then an additional opening fee of $350 to prepare the grave for interment and close it at the end of the service. Um, so a complete first burial for a cremation would cost $875. And then subsequent burials would cost $350. Any questions so far? Anyone have any questions? Okay. Um, so under tab five um, is the spreadsheet of cemeteries locally that provide columbarium um, options for cremations. Um, you can see most of them are, are doing the same three 32 niche units um, that we're proposing here tonight. Um, and then you can see the pricing, price per niche is about $1,200 on average. And then they vary on opening fees from $150 per opening up to $675. Um, so Notre Dame Cemetery there, they sell their niches for $2,000 and they, those are only single niches. You can only enter one cremain in those niches and they charge $675 to open and close the niche. And that's for one? Yes. That's one, one cremain. And I was two. Okay. Yes, correct. Are the niches that are proposed here tonight by all three companies would accommodate two cremains in standard size urns. Um, after that spreadsheet is just the pricing sheets that the cemeteries have sent over to us. Um, so you'll see a number of them. Um, I think the closest cemetery to us besides Notre Dame is Riverside Cemetery in Fairhaven. They've purchased identical units to the ones being proposed tonight. They purchased 96 and they sold out within a year. They did pre-sell their units, um, but they sold out within a year and are ordering in the process of constructing new ones for the cemetery with Watertown Engineering. In tab number six, I've offered some pricing options um, for consideration. I wouldn't say this is an either or, it's up to the discretion of the board to come up with the pricing. Um, and then city council would have to approve as well. Um, but just to give you some idea of 
um, what could be generated for perpetual care and sale of lots. Um, the first option sells the niches for $1,000 and charges a $200 opening fee. Uh, so after two complete burials, the cemetery would realize for, uh, $1,400 in income. Um, when you break down and subtract the cost of purchasing the units, um, the revenue, total net revenue would be $84,300 for the cemetery um, to put back into perpetual care as well as sale of lots so that way we can extend the life of Oak Grove Cemetery and maintain it in the future. Option two raises the price of the niche by $200, um, maintains the opening and closing fee, and you see the net revenue comes out to $103,500. Um, so niche price stays um, within perpetual care and sale of lot. Opening and closing fees would be um, general fund revenue. Um, and then we'd also charge the $25 deed fee to prepare deeds um, with the city clerk's office as well. What's the difference there between option one and option two? Um, it would be a $200 difference per niche. All right, the first one's $200 for closing fee, correct? Open yep, closing open and closing fee, fee the would be the... But the grand total is 16 it, We would increase the price of the niche from 1000 to $1,200 in option two. Okay. Maintaining the same opening and closing fee. A thing to keep in mind is while you are only able to inter two cremains in a columbarium versus four in a traditional cremain lot um, in ground is you, the families won't have to purchase a headstone um, they would be provided the um, exterior door that would be engraved that would be a fee that they would have to um, incur but they wouldn't have to purchase the granite the door gets engraved. monument correct yep um, so um, when you had stated that the city council has to approve, what, did, what do they have to approve? So Sorry, it, it, it's my understanding, and John can correct me if I'm wrong, that the board would propose board. pricing and then city council would just have to oh, ratify that. The oh, for, the, the, for the pricing, but right. not the for the purchase presents, of it. So we can approve that. It. Okay. Correct. To the city council. Would have to change. To be put in the ordinance. You actually present it to the ordinance committee, and then the ordinance committee presents them okay. to full council. I want to understand. The board sets the prices, but in order for any fees to be collected, right. it has okay. to go through the ordinance. Right, but I was wondering if it was for, the, for us to purchase this, to vote on this. That's price. completely when under the said, board's purview. When you said the, the city council, I got a little confused. So sure, sorry about that. Clarify that, thank you. I think Anyone the fact that it? they're in Fairhaven is, provides this board an option to get a, bird's eye view of it yeah. if you really wanted to Absolutely. see what they're and they have they have um, offered that to anyone <coughs> um, on the board and and our staff to go and and visit and check them out if they would like to do that in person anyone have any questions so then it would be option one or option two that we would need to decide to is that correct that's up to you option one option I don't, two or can I, make this I don't so, no, go ahead, Commissioner. I believe, uh, first of all, I want to thank Mr. and his staff and, and Mr. Perry for Great job. Yeah. putting this together for um, very concise, very informative. Um, I think, I think both options are the way to go. They'll give the citizens uh, who want to make these purchases a choice. Um, so I'll make that in the form of motion no, that we approve this plan. No, just for a second, Jeff. One second. We, uh, I would make the suggestion that because, uh, that you have at least, because of the Friends of the Oak Grove and the, in, the interest that is in the Oak Grove Cemetery, that this board makes some type of a, you, uh, while I have no problem, you know, going with it, before you make a final action, I would propose some type of a public hearing so that people can come in and see what it is and because you're going to have to make you can't make the transfer of the perpetual funds tonight anyway i don't think are you are you referring to both proposals or just the column just the column, just the column okay the so we won't hold up street. the other process yeah, the other thing is the other thing Excellent. is already awarded yep. and ready to roll but with yep. the column yep. with all the interest that we have in Oak and Grove my suggestion as far as pricing uh, 
to the board would have been uh, anyway. If, if you like the column burial idea, um, if you want to put it all on hold, fine. If you had chosen to go with the column burial uh, proposal that you uh, don't need to set the price tonight. Okay, so that is something that could be set forth forward. We still need to order them, get everything prepped, and do the work that needs to be done prior to them arriving. And in that time period, you would be able to discuss, debate, uh, have a public forum as far as setting the price. So that would have been my suggestion either way. Um, and, and while I'm speaking, I just want to make sure, uh, former chairman, chairman, um, well, for now, I guess you're still in the seat. So either way, and, and Ms. Chairman, um, I would like to commend Chris for the work he's done on this. I appreciate yeah. the thank you, yeah. um, but this this is, is Chris's work. Um, he and I discuss it along the way. Uh, but this is his proposal, and he's done an excellent job with it. I think he's uh, gone through it A to Z, and I would just like to commend him for that and thank him for that work as well. And thank I'd like you. to thank I, I thanked him yesterday. I didn't do this alone either. Brenda, who's here, uh, was a big help in contacting the cemeteries to do some additional research for this as well. So it was a team effort. Yeah, and I was Great here job. yesterday, and yeah, I thanked yeah. him enough. It was... It was very informative, so thank you guys. Great, great. So I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we have a public hearing. Okay, do you have a second? On, second? on this plan. Second. Okay. As soon as possible. Okay, so we have a motion. Second. And a second for the public hearing. Just to explain to what, what you're putting, you would be able to demonstrate those pictures on the slide at the presentation. Yep. And, and another another thing that would be um, debated in that public hearing, I would imagine, would be the location. Uh, now we have a proposed location that we can discuss uh, after the fact, but uh, that would be something else that the board would want to make sure that they, they had a, a fixed opinion on mm -hmm. uh, when we come back for the next vote. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, we can have a public meeting prior to or your next board meeting. Yeah. It could be simultaneous, and then we can have it prior. Yeah. Questions, yeah. Um. So just so the board knows, it doesn't have to be separate. It can be all done at one time, so it wouldn't take more than that following month, but it gives time for presentation to be put together, and maybe even the water town person would come down. I'm sure he would, yeah. I, w I would suggest the sooner the better. Um, as Chris laid out in the beginning of the proposal, we are limited. Um, and this work um, that he's done has been thinking outside the box. Uh, it's keeping us from having to partake in a, a large-scale project at this point that isn't ready, would have to be vetted, and would take some time. And in that time, we could run out of space. Uh, with the, the original option, not the column burials, but the expansion that you see here on the board, that, uh, that's already done. Yep, that I'm just um, yeah. That's going to give us enough so time. Set, right? Yeah, that's going to give us enough time to uh, to be able to vet out not only this but the larger expansion, uh, so that we can keep the cemetery uh, mm -hmm. going for quite some time to come. Just another note, um, Watertown. It's about a 14 week lead time. So once we place the order, it takes about 14 weeks for it to be um, prepared and shipped and then installed. Um, and then Eichhoff says uh, their lead time is 38 weeks, so a little bit longer. Um, and I didn't get a lead time from Salem Stone, but um, that company wouldn't do much but just ship them to us. Okay. I do not believe so, no. Their, their, my understanding is their columbarium unit um, is incorporated into their mausoleum where they um, enter full bodies as well. Something new every day. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Excellent presentation. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Okay, so a letter uh, to the building inspector regarding the cement steps. We voted already. You made the motion. You made the motion. Made the motion. Yeah. Helen second, and I and I repeated it. Yeah. Oh, we could do it again. You made a motion, Commissioner Silva. No, Helen second. second it, and we're oh, going to put it for the. Uh, yep. Yeah. All in favor for the public hearing. Public hearing. All in favor for the public uh, hearing, uh, so that uh, we all can be on the same page. We'll get it right. 
Okay, so letter to the building inspector for Cement Steps North Park. Is anybody there for this? You have two letters in your packet. Okay, okay. so we have two letters. I will. <laughs> oh, okay. My name is Jim Souza. I'm the chairman of the um, com uh, Community Preservation Committee. Address? 300 Stetson Street. Thank you. Fall River. So um, I'm here. Um, I'm not sure exactly what. We have both the letter from yes. the CPC to Mr. Hathaway, and the board also has a letter from Mr. Hathaway to the board stating he is going to put up um, fencing okay. around the steps. Okay. So I don't know. Um, Yes. Yeah, so, in our yeah, in our, our CPC meeting, um, there was a application for um, the removal of the steps, and um, it was suggested in that meeting that a fence be put around the entire uh, perimeter of the stairs um, because of the, the hazardous the condition that they're in. So that's when the letter was sent to you. So you just have to accept, I guess, the letter place on top. There's another thing. I make a motion to replace the letter on the file. Second. Make a motion to Yeah, we'll have to work because the Hathaway to see just how we want to move forward. But the next item on the agenda we can discuss further with the CPC. Okay, so you want to stay down here? No. Okay, so there's been a motion on the table to accept the letter replacement file. Second. Second by Commissioner Tavares. Okay. Are you discussing bleachers or stairs? Stairs. The bleacher stairs, yeah. bleacher slide stairs. Right now, it was just the uh, letter. Proposed CPC project presentation support letter projects. That's the one that we want to talk to you about. Yes. Evidently, when we were, that's for North Park. Right. Do you want to come down to? Sure. Because if I'm cor corrected, you came down the last meeting. Yes. yes. And just can you state your name, please? And your Kathleen address? Kroger, 470 North Belmont Street. Vice President of North End. Okay, you want to come down and yes. state your name and address? David Jennings, I'm from 12 Plain Street, East Berkeley, and I'm the director of Lafayette Derby House in Boulder. Okay, motion to waive the motion. Motion to waive the motion. Second. Motion has been carried second. Okay. So, so this was confusing watching the CPC. I watched the CPC meeting and I don't know if anyone else did from the board, um, but what happened was we had voted on the presentation that you brought down to us. That's right. I watched the CPC meeting. And I saw something totally different. So the, the, the original one you were speaking of is at the eligibility. At the eligibility round, we recommended that everyone go in front of the particular board that would be sort of in control of the project. Um, so the North End Neighborhood came in front of you at one park board meeting, I believe, to get um, so a written OK and support, support from the board. Mm -hmm. so, that's, so this happened before the funding meeting. So they came to us with their funding application and with the letter of support from this board. Mm -hmm. And I think what you are suggesting, and you're correct, is that the eligibility changed from the time the funding um, uh, wording, I would say. Right, between the correct. December meeting and what was presented at your right, February meeting. It seems right, because right. like you say, the eligibility came through and then they came to you for a s support, support letter support. and then by the time the funding application came to us the description of the project was a little different correct a lot different a lot different a lot different so that so who rewrote that what's that who who rewrote the project i, I i'm just being the chair i'm i'm just receiving it like i wasn't part of the project well, itself Mr. Well, so Dias. Mr. Dias. He was here. He's outside. He's outside. He's outside. He's he, Could you explain the differences to us that well, you're concerned about? Pool, uh, there was um, Nancy, do you have that? I can explain it. I had sent an email um, basically to Mr. Susan alerting him mm -hmm. to that. And what was presented um, 
and I do understand what you're saying, and I believe you're correct too. The fact is, when, when, the, when eligibility is written and the project is written, they're giving their support on that particular project. So, and then if the funding round comes, this is Mr. Dias, if you want, if you want uh, to Tony Dias, Vice Chair of the Community Preservation Committee. So we're just discussing how the eligibility from the, we're talking about the stairs or the waiting pond right now? We're talking about, yeah. Both. Oh, but can so, I, so, so we can take them one at a time. Can I clarify something? According to Mark, the Lions, the North, the, uh, mm -hmm. North Park, stairs and bleachers are two separate items. Well, we're talking, we're, we're referring to them as the, the steps, the cement. That, cement steps that are utilized or as, have been utilized oh, as, bleachers. as bleachers. Okay, because she's got two different things here for yeah. the, you know. Right, she has stairs as in the stairs, concrete as in stairs. The concrete or the, right. the uh, granite stairs that get you from one yep. portion of the concrete. And then she's yet. got the concrete bleachers. So basically, this is referring to the concrete bleachers. bleachers. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So when. Uh, Ms. Kroger presented it to the board. The presentation indicated that there would be a gradual series of shelf-like terraces rather than it be simply tear the <coughs> steps out and put the slope. And that was what was proposed in the Martha Lyon study from the 2006. Okay, Ooh, that was pretty good. Got it right here. Uh, so, um, <laughs> but yet when we heard that the, the it, it was coming across as completely different, and it was coming across it at, at, when Mr. Dias made the presentation at the March, was it March? February, no, February 28th, February 28th, I believe. Okay, that meeting. So the board contacted me, I watched the meeting, it wasn't, and, and as for the waiting pond project, there was never a mention to this board about flooding the waiting pond in the summer. That's correct. Um, it was strictly going to be used as That's correct. Kennedy Park was used and Kennedy Park is not flooded in the city. And actually historically my dad has lived across the street from the park his entire life, 88 years and it was never a wading pond. Originally from the 30s on it was one pipe that went straight up and in the summer they would squirt some water out every once in a while. It wasn't even consistently all the time because I was there in the 50s and 60s and they would only do it sporadically. Um, there was concerns. I spoke to my dad on the way here and he said TB was a major concern. And I believe even at the CPC project, Mr. Sewell brought up the idea of how is this water going to be treated? Okay. Stagnant water is a real problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't think we should actually even look into a wading pond for health reasons at this point. I'm more concerned with the idea of restoring the area, doing the groundwork around it, weeding, controlling everything there, and, and redoing it as a skating pond in the winter. Well, that was what we... That was the what we all agreed was, on. Because one proposal was set as exactly, whatever, and then it was coming back to the CPC as another. Yeah. Like, I was not it, at the CPC meeting, I, and I, a different I, plan was proposed. Yes, I, I can clear it up. It, it was I can it up. <laughs> so, um, I believe it was September, we had a meeting in the Historical Commission with Mr. Chris Gallagher. And the issue was was that the North End neighborhood had submitted an application last year for a existing conditions report for North Park, which has been referred multiple times as a feasibility study and other things. It was made clear to Mr. Gallagher at that meeting that that report <coughs> needed to be completed ASAP so that the North End neighborhood could take that report, use the information in it, to complete this year's applications for the removal of these concrete bleachers and the waiting pond. At that meeting, Mr. Gallagher indicated, oh, I get three months, no problem. We're gonna put out the RFP. We'll get this done. It shouldn't take more than a month, month and a half to do. So the North End neighborhood, which I'm a treasurer of that, we waited, we waited, we waited. One week before the September 1 deadline, there's no report, there's been no RFP, so we were left scrambling. An RFP for what, Mr. Dias? So uh, the process is, is that the city would need to issue an RFP to hire a landscape architect 
to go through North Park to do an existing condition study. And what the, RF, what the application that was approved indicated was that um, we were interested to know in items that were original to the Olmstead design. We wanted to know what those items were. And the second piece was, uh, what are the hazards in the park? So then, so I can understand this and the board can understand this. So Mr. Gallagher stated that he was going to put an RFP out that for this correct. type of work. That is correct. That now was we, in 2017. Th this was a meeting that we had, uh, so our deadline was September? September. September 1, so I'd say three months before, before that. This is, this is before these yeah. items came before the board. Okay. Okay. Well, the, there's the whole question of why the North End neighborhood didn't come before the board for that particular item. So in my conversation with uh, the president of CPC up in Boston was that a nonprofit is allowed to apply for CPA funds to do a study, any, any study that it wants. What occurred is the North End neighborhood lost its nonprofit status. And the second that it lost its nonprofit status, it reverts back to a city project. So that's where, at that point. And, and I can also, I want to interject on one thing. In the past, with the f five or six years now, with CPC has been enacted, we never required a project to go in front of whatever department would be in control of the project. Like this, for instance, we we I, I think our board was I mean we were kind of like learning as the years go on. I think we were remiss in not contacting boards to make sure they were on on board with the project. For us to just say, hey, you know what, we're going to have ten park projects and throw them all on this board is not fair. Right. Right. And we only finally realized that within the last you. year. Right. And quite frankly, myself and I believe this board for the longest time was under the impression that when the North End neighborhood applied for a project, then the North End neighborhood dealt with the CPC and mm. did whatever, but that is not the case. Yeah. Right. They need to have a city entity. Right. However, because it never came before the right. board, and because it never came to the park department, I, I, we were never aware right. of so I, and I and I do want to publicly and I do want to publicly apologize to Nancy in the fact that uh, in the meeting, and I look back at it, you were, you know, it was brought up that you weren't doing your job, but it, but it wasn't, the fact is, you were never aware of the job. It, the it was, right. we, we were expecting it to go to the buildings and grounds person, and we, I was remiss in thinking, or not listening in that meeting, I think, and not catching that well, I think moment. we're taking tremendous strides in you know. putting together meetings that we're all going to get together and right. find out who's in charge of what, how it's going to work, and whatever, but, mm -hmm. but, we're still at this point of process and this process of what do we do with this project and and again even with going back to that North Park study I realize and, and I've heard the opinion from many people not in, in conversation that you know there has been a study and this study I understand the study was done some time ago and it does it does identify many of these things that a, a, another architect is going to do just the same. And let it be known publicly again that in 2008, Park Department, when the Park Department was in charge of its projects, applied for a city grant to repair those cement bleachers. We were awarded the grant, but it was in 2008 or 2009 when the 9C no cuts were here. And we were not allowed to utilize a match from the city. So we had to turn that money back to the state of Massachusetts. So let it be known that it's not the park department that did not know these things needed to be addressed. We did address them. Unfortunately, after that, the projects came out of our hands. So if there are much more important departments when we have nine C cuts that are going to be the receivers of these, these this funding. So yeah. at this point we haven't received And, and Nancy, we'll, at least the North End neighborhood is very aware of that. Um, but the one thing that I would like to make all of you aware is that Nancy Lyons reported, Martha Lyons, Martha Lyons report, um, both the North End neighborhood a number of years ago and the Historical Commission said that it, it agrees with many of the items in that report, but some items it doesn't agree with. 
and part of the items that it doesn't agree with in that report is that she references a 1940s park design and both the historical commission and the northern neighborhood are wanting an Olmstead design which is the 1912 design so that's one component the other piece is she had pricing on there from 17 years ago well, the pricing is never going to be Right, but the pricing is from 17 years ago, so this study was going to identify those steps with today's current numbers where... Um, yeah. I just have a question. This board doesn't have anything to do with these studies and everything that we're here for tonight, correct? You were going to be copied on. Okay. What do you mean? This proposed North Park study? Yes. We've never had anything to do with it at the, up until this point. But right, I, but it's, it's I, really in charge. Chris <coughs> Gallagher is in charge of, he was assigned the project. Right. But my point, and, 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 and I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, you sure you I mean? understand that she's not identifying back to a certain point, but she does identify the key components mm -hmm. in the park that need attention as in the North Park entrance that's where she started that's what we did second step second thing she identified was the granite um, the North Park concrete entrance? steps well what's the North Park entrance that where all that was redone at the bottom Main Street, Main Street. Main Street. Main Street. Main Street. Main one at a time so we can hear everything I understand and right. the, but the, the thing that we have to understand is I know that the Olmstead design is very important I know the Olmstead design is very important however I think we have to meld the Olmstead design mm -hmm. with the modern times and the modern usage of these parks because paper boats will not be sailed in North Park. Well, <laughs> and, and I mean, and I understand your passion, but I also understand what I deal with every day as far as what is going to sustain the usage. So I'd like to meld the two. Well, I'm not looking, you know, I know we have to contact Mass Historic as well right. to make sure that all of this is, but I don't know that a complete study, a complete new study is what we need. I think that with the cooperation and the groups working together, something could come. But Nancy, you're coming right there that you don't think a new study is required. That has been one of the issues that this RFP has <coughs> out when it was supposed to, to give us the information, because it's been like, we have this Martha Lyons study, why are we gonna spend $44,000 to do in another existing study? Now, here's the other issues that you talked about mentioning Mass Historical Commission. North Park, Ruggles, Kennedy, former South, all have preservation restrictions on them. Mm -hmm. Anytime that you wanna do anything in that park, change your bench, whatever it is, the process is they're supposed to contact Mass Historical Commission, then they send a letter to the Fall River Historical Commission for their opinion, and then Mass Historical Commission, because it's their preservation restriction, makes the final decision. Let me give a little example of the previous presentation here. Oak Grove Cemetery, multiple preservation restrictions on it, requires that the city contact Mass Historical Commission first, then they're going to contact the Fall River Historical Commission, and the conversation is going to be, we're not interested in the 1940s group <coughs> design. This is a park cemetery. It's different than all of the other cemeteries. It has to have curved roads. They would provide that information. Mass Historical Commission would either agree, not agree, and now we would have all of us you know, have been talking about it, discussing about it, coming to an agreement. What's happening right now is you you guys decide what you want with the park board. North End has their thing, the historical commission, there's no discussions with the groups. So I respect your opinion that there's not gonna be any uh, sailboats on the waiting pond, but I feel bad. I feel bad because my kids are on their iPads all day. I would like to take a little boat on them, have them spend a couple of hours outside. Well, now they use remote control vehicles in those well, well, skating you know. parks. <laughs> well, unfortunately, yeah. that's what they're doing there. Well, I, you know, I, I look at Central Park as an example of how preservation and modern decisions can be made, and well, there's no me, no one drowning in their fountains. Yeah. They they have historical accurate Mr. benches. Dice. So, thank you.
just to bring everything back around for a minute, um, I don't feel like everyone is all over the place with conversations. I think this started the dialogue and it happened with the CPC meeting that some of the board members and myself had watched. Um, again, we weren't aware of your presentation. You didn't, your name, I think, was even on the agenda. You didn't come, you didn't present what you presented the night of the CPC. Presented here? Yeah, you didn't come here and present. Let me finish, please. And so it was confusing to watch, okay? We all have to get on the same page because it seems like everybody is all over the place. Right. So maybe they should work that out. Well, and I think we, I mean, we should move ahead with the study. We already gave the support. Absolutely. We will, I would and it entertain should be, a motion to take the support back if it's going to be no, what was it, presented at CPC. It needs to be something that comes together and respect the work that has come before. Right. I, I, think, I think the without new study doubt. has to take into consideration the old study. study Absolutely. As well and come to a, a mutual. And we're not saying that it shouldn't. Neither one should take right. precedent, but I think it should have some. Her, her, I would hate to think that the money that the city spent all those years back to have Martha Lyons do her study, we're agree. just going to like toss away. Here, can I say yes, something? Go I've got the Martha Lyons study here. And according to the bleachers, uh, she goes through it was the, a WPA project in 1937. And her last sentence is because the bleachers are not original to the Olmstead Brothers design, retaining them in their existing form should be a low priority. And she goes on to present the terraced look that she proposed. Get rid of the concrete bleachers, and if you look at, and this, this study is available through the parks. Okay, it's, it's right here, it's all in black and white, and it's not part of the original design of the Olmstead. So why, why go through the process okay. of? Okay, I, let me know if you finished. Yeah. What, why go through the process of this? Why not just use the design that the city has spent money on, and go with that? I mean, we the city has many projects in design that is sitting and collecting dust on shelves, does especially the water. Does any commissioners have any questions? I took right. right. You, well, what happened was we, we sent a letter to uh, support. Too many cooks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I? We sent a letter to support. It wasn't the same as <coughs> what present yeah. that the presentation was. That's where I'm at right now. And so that's where we're at. So, so if we move ahead with the study, the forty-four thousand dollars study, it will do several things. It will clarify what needs to be done at this point mm -hmm. in 2019. It will also give us, as Tony has said, some pricing to move forward with and some recommendations of who the potential landscape architects could be and what that might cost. Okay. So it will give us a little more concrete so features to, we to the plan. So we're back to where we were, right. exactly. Okay, so the study is out of this board's hands. Yeah. It's in Mr. Gallagher's hands, correct? Right. That's what I understand. Okay, so that study will be done. My understanding is it should, it, it's a couple of years old. So then at that point, I'm, I'm assuming that RFP will be put out for a study such as this, correct? You use the word assume. So I've been assuming that the North Barrow Ground five years ago when we awarded the $104,000 we would have in our RFP. That was five years ago. But that's, right, not, but that's not here. That's, that's yeah. not our one. Uh, it's cemetery. Right? Aren't that, you parks and cemetery? But, but no, that no, project not. did not come to this didn't board. Come here. Uh, See, that's no. what people, so there's the problem. That's yeah. the, Nancy's, no. Nancy's I have been meeting with the cemetery. Cemetery. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the right. problem. I've been on this board for a long time, and that's the problem. Here you go. Different committees, different organizations do things differently, and nobody's together. That, that's been an issue for a long time. Going back years, and this board has addressed that, and this board, and this board is trying to fix those issues, and then when something like this happens, we're the ones yep. taking back again. Okay, we vote on something, we approve it, or give a recommendation, and then it's a week or two later, it's something totally different. Okay, the CPC and the CPA all have to get together 
with this board if recommendations are going to have to come from this board. So we know what we're voting on, and when it's voted on, that is what is taking place. I've been on this board for over 20 years, and it's been happening way too much. Okay? And this board has addressed it in the last few years to try and straighten out, not only with these projects, other projects too, with baseball leagues and, and other items. Okay? And this is only my own personal opinion, and everybody has their own opinion. It's got to stop. Okay? We were appointed to do this job, and it seems that people just think that they can go over our heads and do whatever they want. Okay? Or not report to us, or not report the full facts. Okay? That, that's what has me upset. I voted on something, and it became something totally different. I don't know what this totally different is. Well, I mean, I can I can I speak for a second? Oh, yeah. I'm going to give a little bit of timeline here. So the eligibility pro process of these two particular, we'll call it the bleachers steps project, and the waiting pond project came in. The eligibility pro came in in September. I believe Kathy spoke that the bleachers were going to be the terraced. That was in December. Kathy addressed yeah. this board in December. In December. Okay, in December. so so I, the eligibility process of that pr project came in in September and to the, CPC. And those groups said that they needed the letter of support. support. This Go board forward. by January 15th. That's right. So we had the letter. Yep. So we had the meeting in December, and everyone had their. So in December, it was proposed to be a, a tiered step pro project. So when the proposal finally get to us for the funding round for the financing part of it. It became a slope, correct? It became no. the park department hasn't yes. done what they're supposed to do. Yeah. The park director isn't doing what she's there supposed was blame to do. And this is supposed to That's be a right. slope. This is supposed to be like this, and it became a blame game. Right. And quite frankly, I'm getting tired of the yeah. blame game for things that myself, this board, had nothing to do with and has been exercised. People go in front of your board, be awarded these projects by your board, and then when they go awry, Aren't you in charge of the cemetery department? Enough is uh, no. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm in total agreement with your what, what you're saying. The project was supposed to be. They came. You came in front of the board for a tiered step project. Am I correct? Right. In December. Right. That's correct. Hold on, Tony. And then. Thank you. Then it then came to us <laughs> as a slope. Who made it the slope? Tony, Tony, who can explain us that? Who came? What? What made it? Made it what made it a Tony slope and not a tiered? <laughs> it was a tiered pro proposal, and it then it became tiered a proposal. slope. We got the letter from the park board for a tiered proposal, correct? Okay. I, let me explain. You are going to go. You're on. Okay. So the first process is to see if the project qualifies in the historical category. Doesn't matter if you say you're doing. Uh, Tony, don't don't go no, through all that no, stuff. No. Forget that. So, because we were left with one week to put together a proposal and the amount of money that we were requesting. It just didn't make yeah. sense to Can ask, I ask for a question. No. Why was it one week to put together the proposal? She had came before us with to, in, in December. December. So yeah. why, why, if, to me, you proposed everything but the, everything but the amount of money that it costs to do the project. Even that, you can go out and say, I can go to a contract and say, I want to meet the gentleman from, from Joe A ABC Construction, and I want you to look at these steps. What I would like to do, because it's a ballpark proposal, I understand that they're, they're kind of giving well, you a ballpark figure, correct or no? Well, what, I, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand the process. Ahead, what, what I'm trying to, it, it it came in as a tiered, stepped proposal to this correct. board, to this board right. and this board pr approved that. Right. When we did the funding round, all of a sudden we really were approving a slope, which is not what you we, agreed to. We, we were approving eliminating a hazardous condition. But Tony, but, the but thing the, about it is, what needs to happen, and you, oh, this board's correct. Like we need, you should have come back to this board saying, you know what, it's not going to be a tiered now. It's going to be a slope right. now. No, I'm, I'm you can't just change easy. something I and am not voting come back. Against all City of Fall River projects. I, I've been doing that all along. I am going to vote against the two North Park projects. That, I'm not doing that. That doesn't that. make sense that, to that, me. That will just make it all easier for everybody. We just want to know that the, the letter of support that this board gave does not have to be changed. It is not going to. It, it is not going to be flooding the pond in the summer. It's strictly for winter skating and to fix the, the flooring and the plumbing and whatever. 
that the board's concern is that the letters of support that they gave I, I don't match. Don't That's match. You're, you're right. I'm in agreement with you. That's why you, you are they right. Are proposing and That's the letter right. of That's support right. match. That's why Commissioner Yitkin was saying if we need to pull I back agree. the letter of support, we will. Because the agree. board want them to match. Right, because the board against. did not Because You are right. So. The, the last point that I'll have is, and confirm this one up. <laughs> we approve projects, they go before the city council, the city council approves them, then someone who had no information on the process, the applications, puts together an RFP, the water department chooses a designer, and the project is completely different. I'm going to put the blame on myself. I don't think you it's know, you. I, I'm going no. to. I'm the chair of the board. So, we so have been remiss in this all these board? years. It's no, no, no. No, uh, I, I am saying that once it leaves our hands, it becomes anything. But that it didn't leave your hands. It was in your hands. This is where we were concerned. We're like, yeah. it's in the hands of the people that are saying they're going to handle the project, and right. it's already changed. It, You're it saying hasn't changed. The project changed. It hasn't changed. It became it a phased project. Okay, so in order to get the tiered steps, you need to remove the concrete. And the application had all of that information but, in there. No, but, okay? but, but in, that's what it says in, in all, the application. But in all fairness, Tony, I think really, like, and I'm not picking on you or blaming anyone, but I think you should have come back to the board saying, you know what, the first phase, this first funding round is going to be for the slope. That's what it's going to be. It's not going to be that tiered step thing. We're going to go for the slope part first. Let's put it this way. The pricing Correct? to slope that down and a pricing to gradually tier that down is going to be two, two different, different kinds price. of pricing. Yes. It's never going to be the same because the tiered work is going to come be much more costly than them just sloping it like the side of the that's on President Avenue. Yeah. Because when when you terrace it, you're creating you're creating somewhere for those people to sit. You're right. creating, which is what we I need. Mean, this is well, the point of everything is, as far as I'm concerned, and this board, we voted for something. It went to the CPC. It, was it wasn't. Else. It was something different that was presented. We have a letter of support that this board voted on. We just want to make sure that if we vote on something, it's the same thing that what we send the letter right. of support for. That, it makes if sense not, to me. I have no problem of entertaining a motion to withdraw the letter of support, mm -hmm. and then we can just deal with it from there. But it has to be the same thing. I agree. As what I, mean, this board, I totally agree. I agree also. What this board, because I agree. when we saw it, I it agree. was terrible. And then to say, you know, again, not to be the dead horse, but to say the pop director isn't doing her job the, with a pop board, this, right. that. It's I agree. Just, and it's we certainly wrong. apologize for any of it's that. It's just wrong. And I do too. And, and, and you're, apologize, you, I, I'm totally in agreement. High. So if there's anything else Mr. that we can do, trying to say oh, something. I'm sorry. I didn't no. see you. I didn't know if you were sitting no, there. I don't know who you are, so I'm sorry. I think what we got to see you are in oh, your John Grant, uh, 116 Rock Street. Uh, okay. Thank you, John. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Thank you. There were two different projects. So the one we were talking mainly about is the bleachers. And we submitted we submitted one to do the, the pond, the skating pond, do that. So it was a separate one, which we didn't, I think, get a letter from you on that. You got a letter from both of them. Uh, both of them. One letter mentioned. But, the, right. but, but what the board's concern is, the original proposal with the skating pond did not yes. address right. flooding the skating pond in the summer. Correct. It because was we had yeah, never discussed I, winter. I think we were more on ice skating. I don't know how to wait. But not when you no. watch your meeting. No. Yeah, right. Because oh, right. your yeah. chair questioned yeah. it. The other gentleman, Mr. Soul, questioned it. Correct. There was going to be some additives to the water. Isn't that true? Uh, and filtration and all that. It was right. turning into a yeah. whole yeah, water right. filtration plant. That's exactly plan. what I wrote. But it's not right. <laughs> but it's you not did, but it's not right. Right, but that's not what came to the board. Right. And that's what I, we're saying. But I, we're not going to just keep going on and on. Yeah. I, I, I it's gone long enough. Yeah. Yes. I would appreciate it. it. I just thank everybody for coming. I'm going to tie your hands. Okay. Yeah, thank okay. everybody well, for coming. Just and just to make sure we just want to make sure that you so know that. So let's go back to the study. The study, the CPC's, the park board and the park department has had not a thing to do with that study yet. I, I keyword yet. Yeah. If the CPC chooses to go, you said Mr. Gallagher said he's going to be able to do that study. So maybe this board can send a letter to Mr. Gallagher stating that you came, this group came before us mm -hmm. and they are interested in that would be moving good. forward would be very with helpful. the CPC study so that we can move forward with, with the remaining other of the projects okay. that are coming before that, us. That's, so that would perhaps be good. that's the, the route we need to take 
I think that's a good one. And the board can can make a motion Anybody to, to I send him a letter to, to state Entertain what a motion to send Mr. Gallagher a letter regarding the RFP. I'll second it. For the North yep. Park study. Park study. study. Make a motion. Okay, John, so second. Gallagher Colin, second. I think with the study, what our, our main thing was is breaking it down to where, like, how much it would cost. It's basically know. a cost analysis yeah, rather right, than the right. and that's what I was. Because we don't know what, we know what it should that be that way. Like, this is what know. I'm saying. This tells us what needs to be done. The question is, yeah. how much is it going right. to cost now? Because and we we've apologize because we had nothing from 2007. Yeah. We're almost 20 years down the road with these prices. Well, okay. So yes. One of the issues that we find okay. when we ask contractors for proposals is we can't use them uh, when the RFP goes on. Let's get so, the RFP first. I mean, let's send a letter right. because you've been waiting for how long? Uh, Two years. Since last year. Two years, yeah. Over a year. Oh, oh. So I submitted my professional proposal on there. So, for the proposal, I disqualified I'm not going to get involved in that. But, all right, so we already have a, a, yeah, that's a motion in a second. We'll send a letter to Mr. Gallagher the, finding out regarding the RFP. The, and the North also, End went thank you. to Martha Lyons's recommendations okay. she's a she's in a store she's, she's a landscape so architect okay. Tony, you're not in our landscape architect okay you that's can, why we went to this all right and you can discuss that at a later time we've had enough time we have okay. to just move this along but yeah. thank you very much we appreciate your time thank you and sorry for, for the confusion in. and certainly okay so any insulting page. or yeah. okay. disparaging thank you. I, I, agree with you. Don't hesitate I, to didn't, I didn't mean to insult you by uh, what I said because we have over 1.5 million with the city and when we get to a point where things aren't being done, so I know Chris, we, we, we get on Chris's all, all the time, and we were talking about parks, and, and that's when I mentioned doing it. wasn't to say you weren't doing your job, it was just another layer of but, that's. Out of curiosity, though, who signed for the, the job? Was it Nancy? Uh, well, for, for the, uh, for the park they study? have staff meetings. So it had to be Chris, right? Uh, yes. So Chris, Chris signed it, so. so correct. I don't, okay. I don't have anything to do with it. And my, okay. my concern was it was she. She dropped the ball. Yeah. Okay. She did not. She did she a did job. She did not. She did it. Okay. We'll just think that. She did okay. a good job. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Anybody have any questions before they leave? Are we yeah. all... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't, you didn't drop the ball. Take it easy, Victor. There was a letter to the building inspector. Yeah, that we yeah. discussed that already. We just going to file what he's going to deal with that. We're going to report to the building inspector to see what we can do. We're going to talk to him because I think he is. Good job, Lonnie. Thank you. 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 You're going to give him a copy? That's the letter from Glenn. He wants the copy from Glenn. Okay. Uh, discussion on recent action uh, for the purchase of Maplewood Park land. Um, I believe the city council didn't voted no for it, right? So we didn't know anything about it. We weren't informed with anything. So. Really, there's nothing for us to do with that, right? Well, last month you said that you wanted it on your agenda, so. Well, because it was. It was being, pending. Yeah, it was exactly. pending at the so. time, so. Who is that? Maplewood, um, the land on the Finance side of, yeah. Okay. So there's really nothing we can do or discuss at this point unless anybody has any comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but, uh, what were they planning to do with this? All I saw from the council meeting, uh, Commissioner, was they wanted to put a big sign and uh, say, welcome to Maplewood Park. And uh, this was the land that was on Chicago, Chicago Street. Street. Yeah. And some of the land has now been taken or sold or whatever, used by people incorporated. There's group homes there. There were two other lots in the corner, corner that the administration was proposing that they purchase. Of course, Chicago was that to Right. Yeah. And actually, again, in your packet, while we're at it, because I got the link for this too, there is a list of, they were referring to, you'll see in your packet something that looks like this. Oh, that's right. And there's Thank a list you. of projects and funding that's remaining dormant in these funds. Um, I. It addresses 
projects from 2000, there was one project from 2008, which that was before we became DCM, and I do know about that project. It was a Lafayette Maplewood Park skate park. If you look at the, the department that it says, it will say that there's $6,000 there. Now, when the park department was in charge of these accounts and in charge of these projects, at the end of the project, the money would be liquidated. We would send a letter, a letter to, to the auditor's office, the project is complete, liquidate the funds from the account, they would go back to wherever. In 2009, we became a part of DCM. So these projects were taken out of the park department's hands. So that particular project for $6,000 may have fallen through the cracks. And yes, it does say that it's a park project. If you go down that list, it says Kennedy and Highland Park Department, DPW. City Park Repairs, Basketball Courts, Department, Building Facilities. Chew Park, Spray Park, $39,000, building facilities. By the way, basketball courts, $53,000, building facilities. This is not money. There was, again, someone saying, well, if the park director doesn't want to spend the money, then let's just do what we want. I'm tired of getting the blame. The only other account on here that has park department on it is Patriots Playground. As you guys know, I took control of that project. Right. That's, since 2008, that's the only project I took control of. There is $18,000 left in that project. That $18,000, I have already informed and, and spoken with Mr. Perry. I've already informed the administration. I would like to do some landscape work there. It was fall when that playground was put in. We have issues with washouts. So I would like to plant some grass, put a small fence in front of that playground, and the rest of that $18,000 will be spent on that project. So all of these other monies that are laying dormant in accounts for purchasing and land and construction projects that may be taking place in the park, they are not in my possession. I do not have access to these accounts. So I can't use these accounts. So for that, those kind of things to be said, it's really, I mean, I take a beating everywhere I go. I take a beating at the CPC, I take a beating at the city council, and I don't have a damn thing to do with anything I'm taking a beating for. I did watch the city council, and it was stated that the parks have this money. Um, we didn't know about it. I had called Nancy to find out, and this is what we were informed. The departments, as Nancy said, parks, DPW, um, you can see the departments. So when people are out there talking, it would be nice if they call the park department to, to let them to, to answer a question before they go out on TV and say, look, the parks don't want to spend any money, or the parks don't want to do this, and the park bought this, and the park bought that. Again, as Commissioner Sylvia said, you know, it's got to stop. It's just, it, we're always bypassed, circumvented, and everything Until else. Until it comes to blame. Until it comes to blame, then it's the park board's Let's fault. It's park Nancy's department. fault. Not it's, Nancy. it's your fault. It's, you know, it's everybody's fault. But we don't know about it. We can only do what we know about. And, and they would stop circumventing the park board and the park department. Maybe we could all get on the same page, as Commissioner Sylvia said earlier. So. Against yeah, sorry you took a. So uh, basically, when I requested, I, when I heard the information about the accounts, park accounts, I'm like, what do you mean park accounts? I requested the information from the city auditor, and the document that you have in your package is what I got. So none of that money. I can't even go into a computer and look at the line item account. Nonetheless, spend it. Anybody have any questions, Commissioner? No. So the only one, the only one uh, they're in charge of is the eighteen thousand eight hundred seventy-eight thousand. Well, there is a six thousand uh, dollar Maplewood Park, and I even I, I responded saying, if that money is still in that account, there are some fencing issues at the tennis court at Maplewood Park, and if I can use that six thousand dollars to repair them, by all means, I'm going to repair the fence with that six thousand dollars. But I don't know if I'm going to have access to that six thousand dollars. <laughs> At six thousand two hundred and seventy one dollars. So if the six thousand dollars is indeed in that account and I am able to access that money, I mean I can 
ask you know the administration or the auditor if I can still access that money it is going to the same exact project because that project in 2008 was to build a skate park in Lafayette Park and to refurbish the tennis courts and redo the fencing around the tennis courts at Maplewood Park since 2008 that fencing's taken a beating so I'm sure I can do six thousand dollars of repair to that fencing if I can use that money all the better. So we As for the 18 for the Plate Patriots place, I'm going to utilize that come the spring. So just so that we can have a um, record of this, that this board and you did not know that we don't have anything, I should say, to do with any of these funds. We didn't know about it, am I correct? Two, there's two, the two funds. We have two funds on that. The parks for the, the Lafayette, the first one, right. from 2008. And the Patriots, Patriots Playground. That's the only one that we have. The only All one. the rest we knew nothing about. The only two. Okay. All right. Anyone want to add any comments or anything? I know. I agree, I agree with the park manager. Yeah. These funds are still there and they're available. That's true. They should be done. used for the projects yeah. that you mentioned. And I'll put that in the form of a motion. Okay. We have a motion to Second. find out. I We'd have to find out, right, Nance? Yes. If we can use the, the funds. I don't know that we can use the ones. I, I would I would hesitate to think we can use the ones that are not in my department. Well, because department. there's some that say DPW and some facility. DPW, so we some won't be able to. It's not well, I know they're for I'm not asking projects. for those. I'm asking for the two park ones. Okay. To do the project that you mentioned, the landscaping and, and the fencing. With, with the 6,000 plus and the 18,000. Okay. I'll read that into formal motion that we uh, send a letter to the auditor to find out if these funds are available okay. and still belong to the park department to be used for those projects. We have a motion. Second. Second, second Helen, second it. Send a letter to the auditor to see if the remaining funds, the 6,271.44, can be used. And, and eighteen thousand. Well, Nancy already said the eighteen thousand dollars. She she can. I've spoken with the auditor she already about spoke the eighteen thousand. Yes. She already said that she in her previous statement she stated that she can use it. So there wouldn't be a need to send it so, regarding that. So it'll just be made. Maple wood. I'm in favor of that. Okay. So motion carries. Motion carries. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. All opposed. Okay, discussion um, regarding the City Council resolution for the baseball field, lighting, and maintenance. Number G. Yeah. Evidently, it was, um, there was a resolution by Councilor Ponte that um, the baseball league um, doesn't want to pay or the they want the pay. city to pay for the lighting. But I thought we gave them, uh, we, we gave them uh, availability to put their sponsorships up on a fence. Mm -hmm. And some of these I hear are doing really, really well. And that bill's only like two grand for a season. What's the problem? Well, what happened was I did notice in the resolution, and I believe it's in the packet. Yeah, we have it. Um, good. That says that um, Struggling, they're struggling. Is that the right one? No, it's not the right one. So, who's struggling? Well, these are struggling. We asked, we asked um, to have them submit the bills for the um, lighting. Yeah. Nancy, do you want to? Your resolution states that they want to have a meeting to discuss these costs. So I sent out an email to the various leagues stating that they could provide me with the information for the past, I said, three years um, on their electrical costs as well as the, the revenue that they generated from being allowed to use advertising banners because that was the reason they were, for years the department did not allow advertising and to defray, help defray the costs to these leagues, it was Simon's condition, so to speak, that they had to be a 501c3 and that because of the, the fact that they were paying the light we would allow them to do this 
advertising on the fence. So I have requested that. Some leagues have sent it in. Some uh, a little have history on this, though. I don't remember what year it was exactly, but when budget cuts were coming down, layoffs were talked about. 2008. 2008, 9. That, you know, we were going to lay off park workers to pay electric bills for lights. We still wanted their lights. So this board devised that plan that Nancy referred to and Commissioner Schulberg to, to defray the cost. You can put it in your name, the, the electric bill, and we'll give you the opportunity to propose to advertise it. We, the first two years or so, maybe three, was a pilot program that you could have put them up permanently. They had to come down. So they were getting vandalized, destroyed, and giving the park workers more work to go clean up the banners that are being destroyed. After uh, several years, two, three years, it seemed to work out fine. The board changed its stance and said they could put them up permanently during their baseball season from <coughs> April to August or September, whatever it was. October or November. Right. And the leagues have raised their money through selling advertising banners, the business sponsorships, and have paid the, the bills for the lights. The kids get to play their night games. Everybody's happy. And what brought this up, I don't know. But it's been years, at least three years, that they've been doing this. Ten. Ten. They've paid for ten. Well, I'm, I'm saying with the, the new plan about leaving a man is up and there's never been an issue about leagues coming before the board saying that they can't afford to pay for the electric for the lights. Okay. They're making, as the commissioner just said, they're making money, they're, they're paying for their programs and they're getting the usage that they want. This board has restrictions and it hasn't affected anybody. So I don't understand why all of a sudden that this has become an issue and it went before the council and there's a resolution. I would love to, my own personal opinion, love to sit down with council president party and discuss this issue. Right? But I don't see a need to change. It hasn't affected any league. No league folded because of it. The leagues are thriving. They're all using them at the different parks, Maywood, Kennedy, North Park, Lafayette Park, and it's been going on for years. So, personally, I don't understand what the issue is, and I would love to have that discussion. To be quite honest, well, isn't spending jumping. over so much money has to go to a public forum if they're going to start paying all these electric bills again? No, no, that's, no. A, that's park projects. But, but the, 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 as far as what, uh, I just lost my thought, so go ahead, maybe it'll come back. <laughs> Maybe it's better off I lost it. <laughs> so, let me ask so, this. I said you have to send in their electric bills, what, copy their electric what, bills. What I guess was protocol was, it used to be, they used to, 501c3s, they used to have to submit. Yes. They used to, I mean, any documentation they should be submitting, they, I, I'm under the impression they used to, right? They used to have to submit, in order to advertise, you had to submit your 501c3. Each year they were supposed to turn in every banner that they had because we don't allow banners saying ale houses, liquor stores. As a matter of fact, they couldn't say liberal club. They had to say liberal function hall. So any of these, yep. but, but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. How can you know what rules and regulations we have when you don't pick up your permit from the park department? And I'm tired of banging my head and being the bad guy again. Because I can tell you right now, I am the topic of conversation again because I have requested this information. But you can't have a conversation with the administration or with the city council without requesting information. But reluctantly, people, I, I got an email response back to me that said, and why exactly do you need this information? So those, how many, how many and I didn't respond, I just said because I'm looking to put together a cost analysis. But I, I 
can't understand how this gets away from us. That's 2018? I, this is 2018 and permits. I have some permits. I think that the board, the board is, Jeff has said, these things have just taken yeah, a turn. They I truly have. It, it has to come well, we back. We're to get back on track. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, and I'll be honest with you, this is where the thought was. I have spoken to a number of leagues, and a number of leagues don't want us to pay the bill. This has to be one or two, and, and, and I'm, I'm not going to go there, but I've talked to a couple of leagues that go, I don't want you paying my bill, because once you guys stop paying my bill, yep. Yep. you're going to make us, going to make more rules about the lights. Yep. When we do something wrong, you're going to shut out the meter. I don't want you guys. They know. Plus, plus you can't have it both ways. Well, you can't have it. the signs, right, generating money mm -hmm. to pay the bill. If we're going to pay the bill, are you still going to have the signs? That doesn't work both ways like that. Well, I think we should make a rule that if they don't pick up the permit, they, they don't use the pop. Well, good luck with that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, is that a motion in the form of a motion? It's a form we have of a motion, motion on the, the floor. Madam Chairman. Uh, we have a form of motion on the floor for permits. Well, anybody want to second it? If you don't pick up the permit, you can't use the pump. You can't use the pump. Uh, I, 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 I want to add to that. Oh, oh to okay, he's going to okay, add. Ahead. You want to add? Sure. Nancy, you requested that the leagues give you a, the bill for the last three years. How many okay. leagues have done that? Two. Off one, the top of your head. Two. Uh, a couple of them don't use banners. I say one, uh, one, two, I'm not going to name them. One, two, three, four, I think four. Well, Five. Five. I would like to amend the commissioner's motion to say that if you don't turn in your 501 3C, you don't get a permit, we put a lock on the, the lights until you follow the rules. Okay, so I'm going to be in the front page. So we have a motion. I'll be right with you. You're that's fine. I always get, that's what you think. When, what, what's yeah, we'll the blame, deadline? We'll blame, we'll blame for that? We'll blame Helen. Would you like to have a deadline <laughs> for them to commission? <laughs> Listen, well, I, how about this? How about this? My suggestion to this board, my suggestion to this board is that you hold a special, a special meeting. meeting and you call in the leads. And instead of Nancy bearing the news, the, 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 the yeah, bad news, be let them get it straight from the source. I'll rescind my amendment. Okay. I'll make that motion. Wait a minute, amended, rescinded. rescinded. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll second good. the commissioners. Okay. So you're. What was the motion, Victor? Victor, you yeah, made a motion yeah, to, have have to have a have special all meeting to have, all, to the have all the leagues come in before the board, so we can get everything back in. But before this, I would entertain a motion. But prior to this special meeting, that they have submitted the information that Commissioner Sylvia has requested, so that way there we basically know. It's that, that being the 501-3C. Well, the 501, yeah. Okay, so, so, the, okay, so we're going to hold a special meeting. So the, is that what? Yes. Is, yes. Okay. So, so this is, uh, so the 501-C3 we need. I, I believe that you want the electrical bills I requested. Yeah. Yes. Along with the banner. And a copy of what they're going to be putting on the fence advertising. Okay, do you want the banner revenue for the last three years? Yes. yes. Okay, because okay. that's what I asked for. Banner revenue, copies of all banners for fencing. <laughs> yep. Because this is what we used to get before. Because when did it stop? That's what I'm curious. Because I'm. Wait, I don't want to go there. But okay. Wasn't that revenue used to pay the lights? Yes. But the banners used to come in, and they used to. The, oh, we're going to put the same banners. I'm going to tell you what. When I get a request, it goes like this. I want the same time as last year, and we get the same banners as last year. No, not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. Not after that special meeting. I want them to come here with their paperwork. And they're going to sign. This is them. the thing. I'll okay. tell you what. I, I, guarantee, I can guarantee you that there's leagues out there that are not using the same banners the year to year because some sponsors you lose, some you gain. So they're not using the same banners. So they're going to address the issue by giving us what we request, in my opinion. Okay, so is it, we're going to have, we have a motion. On the floor. I need to know what to tell them because I don't have to send an okay. email. Okay, so to tell them we need we have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Farias to have a special meeting, mm -hmm. and and before the special meeting. No, they, at that meeting. No, yeah, but they're going to before the that special minute, meeting. So I can give it to the board. They need to submit the 501c3, 
the um, banner revenue, revenue electric, bills. electric bills for the last three years. And a copy of the new banners. And a copy of the new banners that new banner sponsors. Said. Okay, so and how about we have, a, the, how we about have a, that. Do we have a second? How about a permit? No, we don't, they don't, get, no, the they don't get the permit until after that special meeting. Second. Jeff, second. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Yeah. Can I ask a question, Jeff, and you may have the answer to this question. When someone is a little weak, do they still have to file a 501c3 or a 990 form? Because I, I don't yeah. know. If you're a non-profit. When it was a non-profit uh, organization, they can do that through either the parent company, Little League Baseball and headquarters, or they can do it on their own. I'm not completely sure how each league does it. So but they're supposed to. Supposed to file with the Attorney General's office? I believe so. They're supposed to be a 501c3? It's, a, it's, it's a, if I recall correctly, it, it's a form that goes to uh, the Secretary of State and they pay, uh, uh, I, I believe it's a because I always thought $15 I mean, filing fee. I always thought you could not generate or collect revenues if you weren't You're not supposed a 501c3. Uh, I don't know. Well, I just, I mean, because I don't know. I, I've been out of it for a while, so I don't, I don't Would know. Would you know someone that you might be able to get me that information? I, I could get that information. Because I'd like to know whether they have a 501c3. I don't want to insist. I, I know, I know one league in particular that files taxes with the IRS. I think they all should because yeah. they collect. But, fees. Yeah, I'm not, but I'm not I sure if everyone does. Just one particular league I'm thinking of does file mm -hmm. a legitimate tax form. Um, a 990. I believe that's what it is. Yeah, I saw it. That makes that money in that because even yeah, like someone like Paul sees with them, they that's file right. a 990. All those nonprofit organizations right. usually have to file a 990 because yeah. they're generating income, they're, they have expenses. So I'm assuming that even though they're a little league and they fall under the little league charter, they would have to file these 9. I know years back they did. They did, yeah. But like I said, I don't. I haven't been involved in to that extent. Well, you do have. When, when I was a president, I didn't do have. Yeah. You do have people that you would be able to call. I can, I can get that information. If you yeah. could get that information so I, I know what I need to request. Because no. I'm sure there has to be a document. Maybe not a 501c3, but there must be a document that states that they, they have to file in order to yeah. generate income. I can get that. So then. And, and back to the lights, that was. It's light out till 8 30. When we first made lights, rules with lights on fields, like we weren't supposed to use them when kids were in school, and, and that all went by the wayside either. But as far as the lights go, that's been since 2009. Hey, you drive by the park and you see one kid and his dad playing ball over there with all these lights going. <laughs> Thousands of dollars for lights for a guy and his, you know what I mean? Well, if they're paying for it, that's their business. But if the taxpayers Yeah, when it flips for back it, to the other way, the taxpayers are paying. People are going to be upset about they it. They are. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And that's why some people don't want us to take the lights back. And I have spoken to, like I said, a couple of leagues. They are not on board with this. So if you're making money with your sponsors, this shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't be a problem at all. I'm sure some of these leagues do pretty well with their sponsors. Alright, so okay. I, do we have a date that we want this meeting? Two weeks? I want to give them some yeah, it when, the, so when do they open up the... Uh, yeah, well, they'll probably open up the first week of week of April they stop April. playing games. Uh, I can see if it's, there's a Wednesday night, maybe two weeks from now. Can we? Can I suggest that we um, get a few dates for you in case the room is not available? Sure. What, Wednesday. Today is what six? So it'll be twenty. Twenty-six. Oh, wow. Twenty. No, twenty. Twentieth. The twentieth. Twentieth. I don't even know if the room is available. So you know what? I'll get a couple of dates that the room is available. Okay. I'll forward them out. The 13th is no good. Well, that's only a week. No. Right, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, yeah, to do it. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. But we'll have a special meeting prior to Monday. It's 7 o'clock. Ready? Let's go. I okay. Yeah. Thank So we have a correspondence yeah. from the North Park Little League regarding field concerns. Anybody? Yeah. 
We can take it up with them. You can table it and take okay. it up with them Motion next time. Motion to place on file. Or table it. Table, so table it. Motion, Motion to, to table, table. till the meeting. Okay, we have uh, Commissioner Schoenberg and second okay. by Heller. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Um, Monica, what are you here for? Yeah, would it be possible to yeah, take um, is it for O? Yeah. Okay, so uh, mo um, motion to take uh, item second. O. Okay. Second. Yeah, a motion to take it out of order. Second. And second. No. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Where can we get this entertainment? Made a smile. <laughs> yeah, this has been very, uh, very, uh, yeah. Um, so I'm just here today. Um, an update about the last movie that I was here about last month. Um, there are no changes. Everything is as scheduled as um, had been presented to the board. Um, when I do have exact dates, I'll certainly send that to Nancy. So that way all of you will have that. Um, and Chris will be uh, linked to that as well. Um, and then I did have another um, request come in um, Friday, March 1st. Um, and this is also filming um, a request to film in Oak Grove Cemetery for a couple of hours on one particular day. So um, I, I, I think I might have ceased, I sent this to you, uh, Nancy. Right. But if you don't have it, I can give you this. And oh, this one, uh, James Milligan. This is the CW. Yeah, we have it. Eight, yes. Eight Email. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Monday, Tuesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday of uh, one of these following weeks. So once they have it scheduled for the exact day, um, I'll certainly let the board know. Um, and again, it's only a couple of hours, but it would still require the board's permission. Um, and it would be um, uh, the fee would be required for whatever uh, day that they do use it. So. Um, this is the CW. It's called Mysteries Decoded. Uh, one of the shows uh, will profile Lizzie Borden. Uh, the new series is stated, slated to begin airing later this summer or early in the fall of 2019. It's a small production company with about six people, and that includes the crew members as well as the talent. Uh, they travel in two minivans. They use two handheld cameras. They do not use lights, cranes, or any other large equipment during the filming process. Uh, they will not impede pedestrian um, street or pedestrian traffic um, and then I don't know if you guys have any questions or concerns in regards to yep yep they would go uh, they would still abide by all of the, the respected rules of the cemetery yeah that's what they're along any other no just this one uh, in particular is like that, yeah this no one's just names or filming no. Lizzie the, the last one had multiple um, interests in it. Uh, this one is specifically targeted towards Lizzie. Commissioner Tavares? You, you Tavares is going to be facetious and say, well, Bob just wants a role, yeah. Oh, a role in the film. We don't have time for that. No. <laughs> Make a motion to grant permission. Second. second. Motion to grant permission has been made. Second. Second by Commissioner Farias. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, thank you. I'll be in. Uh, Sorry. No, no worries. Thank you for your time. I'll be here. Don't worry. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we have a correspondence from Al Lima regarding chess tables presentation to the Highland Association. So it's just just to let us know that. Um, evidently, uh, Mr. Maduris went to the Highland Association group trying to get chess tables um, through Mr. Lima. Motion Correct? to place on file. Motion has been made. Accept place on file. Second. And second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Yep. Um, proposed attendance. Uh, the meeting of various departments for project procedures. Over J. So this is um, it seems that Mr. Gallagher would like to have an, an open public meeting on Monday, March 11th at 5.15 to discuss the existing study of North Park, Kennedy Park Overlook, and Montauk Bike Path. 
he would like and is suggesting that the board has two members at this meeting. For March 11th. I got school on the Okay, I'll go. March 11th, I have his name. Okay, so Helen and I will go. You want to help? What time is that? 5.15? 5.15. We can only have two. I can only have two. I don't know what my schedule is anyway, but... If something changes, if we need another person. Okay. So Helen and I will go. Motion to place on file. There's been a motion to accept and place on file. Second. Second. Has been made. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. We have um, discussed to cha uh, changes to the ordinance 54 slash 132, proposed changes to park property. I believe this is one of the problems that we have is after $10,000, uh, we need to have public input. So in this Ordinance 54-132, we would need to send a letter to change that. Nancy, do you want to? A couple of things. This, the, what this, the, the present ordinance reads that for any improvement over $10,000, which is minimal, I mean, it's not even fencing, we need to have a public hearing, which would mean advertisements in the Herald News, twice, two times, two separate weeks, sending out information to the abutters. Um, I'm not sure how much this is being followed, but if this park board is going to be in charge of projects or we're gonna be drawn into these projects like we were tonight, I would strongly suggest that we go to the ordinance committee and try to at least up the amount. You know, I, I personally feel that if I'm going to remove a playground and I'm going to put another playground in the same space, I don't know what a public hearing of this sort with advertising costs. I mean, we do have public meetings and, you know, we can have an open informational meeting because that's what they, I believe, Chris Gallagher does. But for park projects, it really should be this. So I think we need to make some changes in what the, I guess we'd have to be open to what the ordinance committee would be um, willing to change. This all came about when they constructed the baseball field at Maplewood Park. And the neighbors in the back were very concerned because this happened, even though the city didn't pay for it, the park was, footprint of the park was changed because that was wooded area and maybe they utilized that wooded area I don't know but so we would need to send a letter to the City Council we need correct? to send a letter to the council to adjust this I, I would think that we could probably have an informational hearing other than when it reaches a certain dollar amount then it would maybe have to be a public hearing but that would be something that this is an ordinance, so the ordinance we could make suggestions to the ordinance committee of what we would want, but they would basically, you know, they don't have to change it. They don't want rule us. Yeah, they don't have to change it. But, but I think any reasonable person is going to change that amount because it would co cost us exorbitant amounts in just advertising. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do a thing. So we need a, and I would move to entertain a motion to, to, send, a to send a letter to City Council uh, suggesting that we can change the ordinance to from 54 slash 132 from $10,000 to... Right, and possibly eliminate the, um, the paragraph that states uh, to notice um, a public hearing that notices under the Zoning Act, which would be to send out to all the abutters. We can maybe put have a public hearing like a regular public hot board hearing without all that fanfare, but uh, it'll be up to them. They may say that they want this if it's over $250,000 project or that that would be up to them. But we can make okay. certainly work with them to see what's acceptable to them and to us so that we can live within this ordinance. I mean, it can be completely eliminated too. A motion? Make a motion to send Second. Send Send a letter to the City Council. City Council. And second. Oh, All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
to eliminate or change. I mean, or you change. Can you can change. ask to Stop eliminate it. and or you can and or amend and let them have, get enter into the discussion with them. Right. Can I don't think they'll answer it or can it change? They may say eliminate it. I mean, you can ask to eliminate it, but they may say, no, we don't want to eliminate it. Well, we want we to make we'll sure send the letter and then we'll see. Right, exactly. You're going to have a discussion in ordinance. Okay, so the next letter L, tree removal request is at 207 Barsley Street, 731 Prospect, and 93 Frost Street. Okay, so starting with 207 Barsley Street. Um, it's a large tree with um, one of the leaders snapped off the top uh, some time ago um, and it is starting to rot and should be removed. Um, I think a portion of the trunk has become hollowed out so that one should be removed. Um, 731 Prospect Street, it's one of those uh, cherry trees. There is rot throughout and there's probably some insect damage. Um, it drops limbs continuously and I would also recommend that one for removal. And 93 Frost Street, it's two trees. Um, they're both large trees and they have significant damage and rot at the base. Um, so they would be a safety concern um, if we don't act um, sometime in the near future. So your recommendation, I'm sorry. Your recommendation is to remove all three. Yes. Make a motion that. Or all four. I'm sorry. From the three all addresses. All, remove all four trees to the safety concern and on the recommendation of. Second. Yeah. That's your motion? Yeah. We have a motion. A second. A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Yeah. Okay. So granted. Okay. So granted. You can go home. Thank you. Yeah. I got one more. Oh, oh you got one more? Got to clean up. Okay. Uh, let's this see. Request for cleanup, Preservation Society, Golden Cemetery, May 4th. Correct. The Preservation Society is asked to be able to volunteer on Saturday morning, probably around 10 a.m. Um, and I'm sure we can get some of the gentlemen from the cemetery staff to assist and provide some equipment and um, the help would be greatly appreciated. This is the cemetery on Purchase Street. Okay. Motion to grant permission. Second. A motion to grant permission and seconded. All in favor? Uh, aye. All opposed? Well, I know which one that used to be Dr. Mm -hmm. Fells officer, Dr. Cage, the dentist. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I believe so, yes. No, one more. Uh, well, I, think, I think it's ancient. Use of Britland yes. Park for cleanup. Yeah, I've done this before. Friends of Rail Trail, April 13th. Motion to approve. Motion to second. approve. Second. Made and second yeah. by Helen. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We just did oh, this one. we, we did, did that. And P. We have one more that I don't have on this one. Spring. Because I got the agenda that we have here. And that P. Do you have one? Yes. I don't have it. What's P? So, P, I, yeah, she uh, amended. It's the amended. We don't have the amended. Um, no, that's not it. She's got, we've got a P. Who's got a P? Get P. Here you go. This is in the agenda. I don't have it. We don't, I don't have it either. But uh, it's go, it's the go. amended, she's getting it. Oh. I'll just use this one. Oh, the new package. I know, but she's got a lot. The four that you people didn't get in the mail. So, P is the open meeting law complaint from Colin Dias from February 6th meeting. His name was. Here you go, I'm sorry. Excuse me. His name was spelt incorrectly in new business. Um, so, based upon that, I don't feel that it's a violation of the open meeting law. Um, it's a typo, and they do happen, you know. So, we're sorry if we incorrectly spelled his name wrong, but the meeting you could hear everything was legible and it was just a typo and we're sorry that there was a typo because typos do happen so um, I don't feel that it's a complaint but we will answer it I think it was just a mistake not it, a yeah it's a typo violation. it's a typo and well, we're sorry no, I mean it happens happen typos again. happen and you know so we apologize yeah, it didn't mean anything by it Mr. Dias, a letter of apology. 
Well, no, we're going to get to the opening we gonna, log. We need a again. motion just to um, I'll make a motion. Minute. Wait a minute, Commissioner Sylvia. I. I have a copy of the Overmeet Law, Section 20B, I that he uh, addresses in his complaint. And I agree with the Madam Chairwoman that uh, there's nothing in Section 20, Item B, that lists any violation, in my opinion. So I, again, I know we have to answer the complaint. But uh, I don't. I don't see any violation. And I'm not. A, and I'm not a lawyer or anything. So uh, it was a typo. We're sorry. I mean, it happens, and you know, we're we're, we're sorry. So we'll answer the complaint, and I'll take care of it. Thank you. We need a motion. Thank I have you. Victor making a motion to answer him. Do I have a second, Jeff? Helen. Oh, Helen. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Any department other updates? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Department updates. We already think we hit all that. Right. Department mm -hmm. updates. Okay, that's good. Commissioner inquiries. No. All set. All set. I got one. Yes. When's that neck going to be done? I knew one. you were going to say that. <laughs> but I had well, a begin to march him, Listen, I had a conversation about that today. So as soon as the snow clears and we can get in there, we're going to um, address that net. Address Don't say that because it's going to be clear. I have a dream Sunday, about that net. That's clear. That's just that net. I, all the money we spent in the back doors. Okay, yeah. so you'll we'll find out. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Third. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.